Well, it, for myself, yeah, definitely. So, I am, yeah. I know you. Well, there's the there's your chance. You can still hit the door. <coughs> Josh Thayer does uh, accreci appreciate the compliment on his handwriting because everybody said it looked like a girl. So anyway, we should probably get started. So um, for the rest of you who don't know me and heckle me on a regular basis, I'm John Stone. I'm the facilities manager here. And uh, I'm also the chaplain at the Shiawassee County Jail. Um, and I'm filling in for Josh tonight. So um, if you want to hit the, d you know, get out real quick before we start and feel free. Um, but anyway, Josh is at a conference right now and uh, he will, I believe he'll be back next week. So um, I wanted to start with uh, any prayer requests that anybody might have. I, I always like to start growth communities that way. I'm, I feel it's important when we get together as, as the body of Christ that we, we do share those things. We pray for each other, pray with each other. And uh, that way we also know what's going on in other people's lives so we can um, we can lift each other up throughout the week. So does anybody want to share? Yeah. Okay. Okay. What's her name? Ruth. Ruth. Okay. All right. Yeah, there's plenty of reason to be nervous about surgeries. Absolutely. Yeah. Anybody else? <coughs> yeah. To prepare for myself, I recovered from a fifteen day stay in Jasper for COVID pneumonia. Oh wow. Uh, again, uh, you know, not twenty four seven. Sure. I'm able to get off work for periods of time, but um, this weakness and my legs and that showed and trying to get back into the mm -hmm. normal flow of life. Sure. And I apologize. I don't remember your name. Diane. Diane. Okay. And I'm pretty bad with names as a general rule anyway, so. Okay. You're a good company. All right. <laughs> we should all wear name tags. My mom's with the Oh, okay. Same, same thing? No. No? Oh, okay. All right. What's her name? Linda. Linda. Yeah, I just exceeded my limit, <laughs> so. <laughs> That's for everybody else. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Mm. Okay. Oh, okay. Even more important. I, I I'll ask. What's his name? Bob. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be a very general prayer, let me tell you, because I've, I can, at this point, I'm remembering the last two. Um, <laughs> you're right. I should just start, start. <laughs> that's not a bad idea. Um, one, I, I don't know how many of you are aware of um, Steve Adcock's condition. Steve has been coming here a long time and um, he had a stroke right before Christmas in a crawl space on a job site. And um, he is recovering from that, but it's, it was pretty severe. So I got an update yesterday and, um, he still can't speak, but he can kind of write and communicate, but that's a vast improvement over what it had been. I think earlier this last week, he was only able to wiggle his toes. So, um, so that's going to be a, a challenge for his family and obviously for him moving forward. So. Yeah. Anything else? Or? Okay. All right. Well, let's uh, let's pray and then um, we'll move forward here. Uh, Father, I thank you uh, for this evening. Uh, thank you that we can gather here together and uh, lift each other up in prayer. We can encourage each other in person and and uh, share the bond that we have uh, through your Word and through the Spirit. Uh, pray that you would. Uh, work through these uh, situations that that have been brought up, the the different um, medical conditions, and um, most importantly for those who don't know you, uh, we know that this life is a very uh, 
fleeting and and um, it's it's quick and and the most important thing is that we have a a real and uh, genuine relationship with you. Um, I pray for those that that were mentioned that um, are are trying to recover and um, who have some uh, procedures coming up. I, I pray that you would s- just work through those situations and uh, guide the doctor's hands, give them wisdom, and um, above all else, uh, help us and, and um, those who are are moving toward these things to glorify you and to um, represent Christ the way that we should to the world. Uh, Be with us as we open your word tonight and um, just give us clarity of thought and and help us to understand uh, rightly what you would have for us. Uh, We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Um, So I was actually going to, uh, um, I wanted to just give a little bit of an update. I uh, I think the was it the last time I covered this? I, I don't know, but um, I had started as the chaplain at the Shiawassee County Jail, and it's um, it's almost been one year since I uh, started with that ministry, and um, and I, the it's funny that um, I still feel more like a kid in the youth group than I do anything else really when it comes to the church, and. Um, for Kenny and Josh to recommend me for that was kind of a shock. And then beyond that to, to actually become this titled person, right? At the jail that people, they look at you and they, they, uh, they don't expect it because they expect a, an old guy with a beard. That's, that's what they've come to expect. I had a guy a couple of weeks ago, ask me if I was from the library and, <laughs> um, which, you know, that's, uh, it's funny, but it's not, you know, but with the COVID situation, um, we've, we haven't been able to be in there as much as we would like. And so, um, there's not a lot of continuity from one month to the next. And, um, sometimes we're in, sometimes we're out and people, there's a lot of quarantine and that kind of thing. But, um, in that time that I've been there over the last year, I have seen, um, I've seen God do some amazing things. And, um, Jesus truly came for the sinners in the in this world, right? It's the it's the sinners who um, understand their need for salvation, and sometimes it's the uh, the religious people, right? The the people who, um, well, in our day and age, the ones who go to church who don't uh, they don't feel that need, and so it's it's really been a privilege to be. Um, to be there, and I, I really need to thank Kenny and Josh for that. I wish Kenny was here. I could put him on the spot, but he's not. So, um, you know, it, it, one of the interesting things about that, and I was given the opportunity starting last summer to preach every Sunday at the jail, and um, that was really a, an interesting, eye-opening experience for me because um, I had really never done that on a regular basis, and uh, I had a lot of preconceived ideas about what I was going to go into, right? Well, these guys obviously need to hear the gospel, they, which we all do. We need to hear it all the time. But, you know, the, these, are, these are our inmates at the jail. So I, I had this idea of what I should talk about. And what was interesting is as I was preparing those, those sermons, um, I think that the person who was affected the most, because I, I can't see the results, I can't measure them at the jail, I think the person who was affected the most was myself. And so um, what I wanted to do tonight was actually uh, just share some of the things um, that God has shown me uh, this this last year and the different parts of the scripture that have um, really impacted me the most. And and then I was, not to intimidate anybody because the door is already closed, but I was hoping that somebody would also share um, maybe something that you've learned through a sermon or something you've seen in your own personal study this last year that um, that has impacted you. You know, and when we share those things together as a group, everybody is built up, right? Everybody's impacted, and and uh, maybe we can all learn some things. Um, so I was gonna I was gonna start because. Uh, it's not very nice to just 
throw it out at you guys. But um, if you have your Bibles, let's uh, let's turn to Romans chapter one. And if you know me, you know that I love the book of Romans. Um, Josh, I think, was exaggerating a few weeks ago when he said that I I was some kind of an expert on it because I'm not. Um, But I do love it, and I find that it um, it's kind of a um, a central uh, like a tie-in for a lot of the Bible. There's a a lot that we can um, learn from it and apply all over the place. So when I started at the jail, the the very first week, this was the passage that I that I chose, and it's uh, Romans one eighteen down through thirty two. And I, you know, I, in my uh, in my naive thinking, I I thought that this was very applicable, of course, only for inmates. But I was I was uh, quickly corrected. And so Romans one eighteen, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them, for since the creation of the world. His invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, so that they are without excuse. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God, or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man, and of birds and four-footed animals and crawling creatures. Therefore God gave them over in the, the lusts of their hearts to impurity, so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. For they exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and, a, and worshipped this and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason God gave them over to degrading passions, for their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural. And in the same way also the men abandoned the natural function of the woman and burned in their desire toward one another. Men with men committing indecent acts and receiving in their own persons the due penalty of their error. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do those things which are not proper, being filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, Malice, they are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful, and although and although they know the ordinance of God, that those who practice such things are worthy of death, they not only do the same, but they give hearty approval to those who practice them. And I know that's a pretty, I mean, that's a pretty bold and hard-hitting passage. Um, but it, it's its really a picture of the culture that we live in today. And um, the, interesting, the interesting thing here, at least for me, is when I started to, um, to look at it in the context of preaching it, uh, I, was, I focused on just a couple of the, of the places here, one being... Um, even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks. And when I started to really uh, dwell on that, it struck me because um, there I was thinking, well, this, this passage is, uh, it's pointing to the world, right? It's, it's got to be people out there. It's people in the jail. It, there's, uh, there's no way that this could actually be something that... I could be doing, right? Could it? Um, And uh, (laughs) so it really started to build a thought pattern in my mind. And then I, I, uh, the other part that I focused on there was uh, in verse 28. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over to a depraved mind. Um, And and then the other part there, um, I'll find it here, uh, in verse 25, they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator. 
And so um, when I really started to, to dig into this, it, it tied in a couple of other places for me. Um, turn back uh, to Isaiah 65. And of course, at, at any point, if you have any questions, just uh, feel free to just throw them out there. I don't, I don't mind talking the whole time, but I certainly don't have to. So just Isaiah 65, the first three verses, and this is God talking through the prophet Isaiah. And he says, I permitted myself to be sought by those who did not ask for me. I permitted myself to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here am I, here am I, to a nation which did not call on my name. I have spread out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in the way which is not good, following their own thoughts, a people who continually provoke me to my face. And so again, th- you know, that's another, um, another place where it, it appears that God is talking to um, these sinful, unbelieving people. But in the context, he's actually talking to the people, like the people of Israel. Those are his chosen people. And he's uh, reprimanding them for, um, for their idolatry. And so uh, in, that, in that context of idolatry, he's bringing judgment on them. And so when I started tying those two together, I'm looking at the state of our, of our world today. I'm looking at my own life i'm looking at what i see in the church i see um i see the same parallels i see the um the the idolatry which of course is putting anything in front of god anything prioritizing anything above him and um and then and i'm not going to get into it right here but when you start to see what he says to those people and the the things that he is saying is going to happen to them, it, then it gets very serious. Um, so the other day I was reading, um, I was reading in uh, Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy chapter thirty, which it, you know some people want to discount the Old Testament, but it has uh, an awful lot of truth, and God doesn't change. He's the same, and he, it's the Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Um, and so, when we when we read the Old Testament in that light, there's there's a lot of a uh, lot of truth that we can learn. Um, so Deuteronomy 30 verse, uh, we'll start in. Well, let's see it. Let's see here. Hmm. Probably verse 8. And again, this is God speaking uh, through Moses. And he says, And you shall again obey the Lord and observe all his commandments, which I command you today. Then the Lord your God will prosper you abundantly in all the work of your hand, in the offspring of your body, and in the offspring of your cattle, and in the, in the produce of your ground. For the Lord will again rejoice over you for good just as he rejoiced over your fathers. If you obey the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and soul, for this commandment which I command you today is not too difficult for you, nor is it out of reach. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us to get it for, uh, um, for us and make us hear it that we may observe it, nor is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross the sea for us to get it for us and make us hear it, that we may observe it. But the word is very near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you may observe it. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity and death and adversity, in that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that you may live and multiply and that the Lord your God may bless you in the land where you are entering to possess it. But if your heart turns away and you will not obey, but are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You will not prolong your days in the land where you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess it. 
I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So choose life in order that you may live, you and your descendants. And um, it's, a, it's an interesting, uh, another interesting connection there between uh, Deuteronomy and Romans. Um, one of the main points of Romans is the concept of being obedient to, f- to the faith, right? Obedience to faith. And it's, it's a, a strange saying, I guess, because um, we don't really think of faith and obedience a, as being the same, um, uh, the same thing or, it's, you know, being obedient to faith. But he's saying right here, um, all the way back in Deuteronomy, when, when Moses is laying this out for the people of God, um, that he's putting a choice in front of them that they can choose obedience in life or they can choose disobedience in death. Um, and so it, it, it was just another one of those interesting parallels that, that struck me. Um, the, uh, I, I think probably the, the thing that has been really growing for me the most this year is when I find these different parallels, if you will, or the threads that I see where the Bible connects all the way through from beginning to end. And, um, and when I start seeing that continuity, it just comes alive. Um, so um, I have some other things, but I, I wanted to um, just open it up and see if anybody has anything that, that really impacted them this year or in the, you know, the sermon series that we're in. Um, any particular scripture that you've been studying that may, um, may edify the, the, the group or... Um, Anything like that? Yeah. Um, you know, for this past year, so I think really hit hard about um, the fact that... I'm, I'm going to have to stop yeah. you because I'm, I'm sorry. Stop. You're going to have to have this. If it's, if it's something... Get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> if it's something quick, then, then I can repeat it, but this isn't going to be quick, so... But take your time. So Josh has been talking quite a bit this year about people that think they're going to heaven, but they're not really, mm-hmm. they're not there yet. Mm-hmm. And it just was really resonating with me. And mm-hmm. I know I had one foot in the world, and I, I just was reluctant to take that last step. Mm. And then when I got the COVID, um, I was l- down to where I thought, you know, they were telling me I was going to die. And all I just imagined was being held in the arms of Jesus, just cradled mm-hmm. by him until I could get, I could talk and mm-hmm. get my thoughts together and stuff. Um, and uh, it just changed my life. Mm-hmm. I, I totally gave up any, any notion of needing to be in the world mm-hmm. to have a connection to my mom and my sister who aren't saved. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I'm all in, and uh, I, I explained that to my mom as well. So I'm, I'm just on fire for Jesus, but... Um, it just, it's been very impactful. It started mm-hmm. with Josh and then what happened in the hospital. So right. it's been amazing. It, it is interesting how we, uh, when we go through things like that, when, um, when we realize that we no longer have any control over our own situation or perceived control, I should say, when we no longer have any perceived control over our situation, it pushes us closer to Jesus and of course, he's he's been there the whole time, right? right? Um, but that's what God really desires of us when things are going well. And um, you know, the, in His sovereignty, it says that He can bring these trials and these these tests, the testing, right? Mm-hmm. And the purpose of that is to conform you more to the image of Christ and draw you closer to Him. Um, you know, in in my effort to try and avoid those things, I'm I'm I hope that I'm doing it in a different way, but I, I don't think I'm going to avoid it. So it's <laughs> been very humbling because I wouldn't have talked about this in the past. Hmm. Now I'm like I'm an open book. <laughs> I'll sure. tell anybody any of it. <laughs> right. Because I just you know I just really feel that it's changed me in a in a very positive way. Right. Well, praise the Lord for that. That's that's awesome. Anybody else? Oh, wait. Jack hasn't... Wait, no, he has an itch. No, he's raising his hand. Okay. 
No, just to go off what you were talking about earlier about how the Bible kind of, you know, intertwines and pulls itself together. Um, in the beginning of that section read in Deuteronomy 30, um, it sounds very reminiscent to the Gospel of John and Romans and Ephesians, um, where it talks about the Lord circumcising our heart mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and our descendants so that we love the Lord God with all our heart and with all our soul so that we may live. Right. That sounds like it could be from the New Testament. It does, doesn't it? It does. Right. Mm-hmm. It's interesting to see, you know, Moses write these things that sound so similar to, you know, what an apostle would write. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, of course, that speaks to the, the divine inspiration of all of it. Right. It's, it's not just a collection of, you know, some interesting histo- history in the front and maybe some poems in the middle and then some more history in the back. Um, it's it's uh, authored by the same, yeah. the same spirit, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and that it brings up another interesting, that, that what you said there brings up another interesting thought because uh, at the end of Deuteronomy 30, uh, right here in, in verse 20, he says, um, you and your descendants, by loving the Lord your God, by obeying his voice, and by holding fast to him, for this is your life and the length of your days, that you may live in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. And um, one of the things that I used to always think was, well, th- you know, it was all about the land, right? I used to think that it was all about the land, when in fact the um, the the father of all believers is Abraham. It's not about the it's not about the land. It was about the covenant that God made with Abraham. And that's the foundation for all of us. Um, you know, he told him that he would preserve him and his descendants. So um, we obviously, I don't think we have time tonight to get into the, into the covenants, but um, any, any other things anybody wants to share before I, I jump back in? Nope. Okay. All right. Um, one of the things that, uh, for me, that that's in, that's very interesting in the way it tied in. It actually ties in, but it's it's more of a hopeful, uh, happy thing, right, for believers. And in uh, Romans chapter one, it talks about the things that God has revealed about Himself through creation that people ignore. Well, as believers, we we get to understand that. Oh, time to be done. No, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> it does go fast, doesn't it? Um, no, we we get to understand that everything that exists is by God, and that um, and the very basis of that uh, Hebrews eleven says is that first we have to believe that God is, then we can believe the rest, and um, so God has given us these things uh, in order to remind us. And um, one of the, my favorites is uh, Lamentations chapter three, and I know that's one that it's right after Jeremiah, right after Isaiah, and I know not a lot of people go to Lamentations very often. But Lamentations chapter 3, verse th- uh, 22, and this is quoted quite often, but I think even in my own life, I've, um, I've quoted this incorrectly, like out of context. And so uh, Lamentations 3.22, the Lord's loving kindness indeed, uh, it, loving kindnesses, sorry, indeed never cease for his compassion never, uh, compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I have hope in him. And there's a, a very common saying in uh, Christian circles that the, God's mercies are new every morning. And uh, it's one of those things that I think that we can take out of context sometimes because what it's actually saying is that his faithfulness is as sure as the rising of the sun every morning. Um, and which, of course, is, is tied in with his mercy. Um, but one of the things that, that I think I've been trying to work harder at personally is when I see the sun rise, 
do I give him the glory that he deserves for that? Right? Do I even think about him? Because he says that um, until uh, heaven and earth pass away, he's, you know, his word is going to remain and, and his faithfulness to us is going to remain. And so that reminder, when we see the sun come up in the morning, we should be praising him for his faithfulness. Um, although, of course, it is Michigan, so when the sun comes up, I'm usually blinded and I'm trying to find sunglasses, right? Because we don't see the sun that often. Um, but but are we are we actually looking at seeing that sunrise and and um, and recognizing the Creator behind the creation? Um, so that's that's been something that has really impacted me, and it's one of those. I guess it's one of the the things that the Holy Spirit kind of poked me when I was reading through Romans chapter one, because there I am getting ready to preach to unbelievers about recognizing the Creator when in, I just take the things that he's given me for granted. Um, so I, it's something I've been working on. Um, let's see. And, and if, you've, if something comes to your mind, you know, jump in any time. You just have to have the microphone. Um, so another one, uh, another thing here that's really impacted me is uh, it's in Psalm 19. And I think I say this all the time um, whenever people will listen. The Psalms are amazing. And um, if you don't make a habit of reading the Psalms, I would, I would uh, strongly urge you to start. You know, read uh, a Psalm a day or read a, a page of the Psalms a day, something, something like that. Um, because the Psalms, I think David had a better idea of who God is than than any of us and and we can learn so much uh through this <laughs> not sure what just happened out there <laughs> it didn't sound good <laughs> uh. and and again this is the and along the same lines uh psalm 19 one the heavens are telling of the glory of god and their expanse is declaring the work of his hands. Day to day pour forth, pour forth speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their utterances to the end of the world. In them he has placed a tent for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. It rejoices as a strong man to run his course. Its rising is from one end of the heavens and its circuit to the other end of them. And there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true. They are righteous altogether. They are more desirable than gold, yes, than much fine gold, sweeter, than, uh, sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned. In keeping them there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Acquit me of hidden faults. Also keep back your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, and I shall be acquitted of great transgression." Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And, um, you know, he starts out talking about creation here and how uh, cre the creation is telling of God. And then he goes from there to um, the word of the Lord and how that is um, guiding him. And it makes people, it makes the simple wise, right? The, the, um, the part that we ro read there in Romans chapter one is talking about how people who profess to be wise are are not right. The, the the wisdom that they have is not of the things of the Lord, and so therefore they're they are not actually wise. It's not the things that are important. Um, but here, you know, the 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 word of the Lord is um, is the thing that is making people wise. It's telling them it's guiding them in the way they should go and um and it's it is uh um 
making, well, it's helping to form us into something that is acceptable to God. And so um, that's, it's just another one of my favorite psalms that, that I've been, um, I've just lived in it in the last year. So, um, so anyway, I, I'm just going to keep going here unless somebody has another, another thought to jump in with. All right, well. Yeah. Initially, you brought up Romans 1, and I happened to see that paragraph this week, and I um, turned to the second one. And hmm. then I turned something else, and I'm looking at my text. I must have taken a screenshot of it. Okay. And I, I don't know where it's from, but it, it resonated with me mm-hmm. with Romans 1. Okay. So may I read it? Oh, absolutely. For sure. Know where I got it from because I've been trying to find it in bi- the Bible. Okay. Uh, I I read the NIV typically, but um, I was using Bible Gateway, the Gateway Bible, um, looking at different things related to the idea that um, people in the end times are turning away from mm-hmm. Christ, and then what you read, the second part of Romans one, chap- uh, verse eighteen, mm-hmm. where God's wrath comes down on those. And they're choosing a, uh, I'm using the denomination sure. of the Lord, but there's another way of saying it. But here's what I found, and I, I don't know where it came from. Okay. I've read it many times. I've been going to church for 55 years. Okay. But I can't find it. That's awesome. So it says, uh, it says it's verse 20. I don't know if this is actually on. I don't know if it matters. But it's for if, after they have escaped the defilements of the world, through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, they are again entangled in them mm-hmm. and overcome. The last state has become worse for them than the first. For it would have been better for them never to have known the way of the righteous than after knowing it to turn back um, from the holy commandment. What the true proverb says has happened to them. A dog returns to its own vomit, and the sow, after washing herself, returns to wallow in the mire. Where is that from? It's is in Hebrews. I believe that's is in that Hebrews? Hebrews. Second Peter? Second Peter. Oh, okay. I, I'm definitely okay. not as good as Google, I the promise. <laughs> I think maybe the pastor did Second Peter this Sunday. Oh, okay. That's where that came from. Did he did. Didn't he address Second Peter this Sunday? Was he, I think that's where he started. Or he, I feel yeah. like Okay. Um, the pastor's been talking a lot about what, what uh, uh, you said. Uh, what's her name? Diane. Diane. I did. I remembered that one. Uh, Got it. So <laughs> best tries to have knowledge but deny the power therein. You know, that verse that we all know that mm-hmm. one and then the end. Um, and when I'm talking to people about this, the, the reality of it, we don't accept it. So many people that say that are in my circle of life um, say that the Bible is just a bunch of stories. Mm. Um, these are people my age, down ranging from age 25 to 60, people that are close to me. Uh, they've come to reject Jesus now, mm. and they're saying things like it was never real. People use use the use the term God as a crutch to get through difficult times. Mm-hmm. That I want to um, argue, uh, you know, sure. what you said 10 minutes ago about the creation mm-hmm. being evidence of God to begin with. Right. How can you look out your window and deny that, that God exists? Right? right. So then I go in that direction, but then they say, well, yeah, there's the greater being perhaps. Right. But the stories are Noah's Ark. Sure. But there's millions of species. Of, there's so many animals. How, uh, how did they get onto that ark? Right. And did, did Noah <coughs> take the boat around? I said, you know, if God brought them to, if God can create the world, why can't bring all of the animals to the earth? Right. And, and all of this thing happened. Right. But I, I just don't 
Sure. Right. Yeah, believe it or not, it's surprising uh, the number that never knew. Yeah. And and yeah. I grew up in the church also. Knew, right. Be. Sure. Right. 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 It's it's a tough one because um, it, you you don't give up on them, right? You 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 don't give up on them. You can certainly can pray for them. Um, you don't you don't beat them over the head with the word every opportunity you get, but you pray for them. You love them um, because that is the picture of Christ, right? So yeah, so when when Christ came to this earth, he was here as a, um, and I'm, I'm stealing from someone else, but the manifestation of the love of God for people to see, right? What better way for us to be able to, to understand God than to have him standing in front of us and loving us, even though, like the Bible says, we were enemies of his, and then dying for us while we were still enemies of his. And um, so the you know the Bible calls us God has called us to to emulate Christ in that, um, and and so it's interesting how these things tie together. When people like the people you're talking about look at Christians, do they see people who are trying to emulate Christ? Are they seeing or are they seeing? somebody who looks no different than anybody anybody else in the world. And um, I think part of what made this stand out to me so so clearly was sometimes it is hard to tell the difference because the people in the church, and I'm, I'm just gesturing this way, it doesn't mean this church, but in the church in general, they have the same idols as the people outside the church. Right? Okay. Well, I'm glad we're on the same page with that then. Right. I think he's said it a few times. But th- but that's uh, that's the um w- you know what is the the number one criticism of a Christian? Judgmental. You're a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite, right? And the problem and and I think the dividing line between um a hypocritical Christian and a genuine Christian, right, who's living it out like Christ um in the best we can is that the hypocritical one makes excuses for it, for their behavior, right? That they're, well, you know, we're just human and this and that. Whereas the, the, the other, the, on the other side of the page, they own it and they understand that they failed and they ask for forgiveness and they, um, and they strive every day to become more and more like Christ. the worst mm. to be the greatest for him. And I always go back to David when I'm sharing certain stories with people about how he murdered his friend so mm-hmm. that he could have relations with a beautiful woman that wasn't his. Right. And then well we all know the rest of that. Yeah. So it, it is true. And to strive to be Jesus like Jesus is a challenge. Mm-hmm. The but but if we can do that, it's hard. It's not easy. It is very hard. But what it sh- the the reminders that God has given us in the world that we see every day, those are the things that we should be um, reminded of His grace. And when we read some of these different passages, like um, Isaiah sixty five, where it says that um, He's standing there w- with His his hands out. Um, 
to people who are provoking him to his face. Well, we, we can't just point at the world and say, oh, it's them. It's the guys in the jail. We all do that every day. We're all, we all sin every day. We all fall short of his standard every day. And so when I read that, yes, it applies to unbelievers, but it applies to me, right? Because I'm, I'm the one who's also provoking him to his face every day while he's standing there with his hands out saying, here am I, here am I. Um, and, and so when we do get those reminders, it should, it should actually give us more gratitude and draw us closer because of the grace that he shows us and the reminder of that when the sun comes up, that his mercy and his faithfulness is as, as uh, sure as that. Yes, you have to have the microphone though. It's on, it's on. Okay. Um, one of the other things that comes to mind, too, is the trials. Mm -hmm. So God says in James, you know, trials perfect your faith and they produce endurance and steadfastness. But that's another thing that is a witness to other people mm -hmm. is when a Christian goes through trials, which we're all going through trials. Um, I would say that's definitely something that we walked through this past year, too, is just what is your witness when you're going through a trial? Mm -hmm. And people around you that watch you, because everyone's watching, everyone else, right? And so when you're aware of trials that other people go through, the trials um, refine you, and they also give you the ability to have um, something to stand on to witness to other people. Like, mm -hmm. why are you not crumbling? Why, mm -hmm. why are you still walking? Why are you still going? And you have a reason for the hope that's in you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, trials that are... And that is the context of that. It's not be ready to give a defense for the hope that's in you when everything's going perfect. Right. Nobody's going to ask you. <laughs> Right? right? Yeah. Right. You're happy because everything's good. But when right. things are tough, man, that's when people are looking at you. And I think that gives me another perspective, too, in being thankful for the trials. Because the trials that we go through as believers, in a part, I think in a big way, are for the lost. So now mm -hmm. we can use this, whatever tragedy that we're going through, and be able to speak to those who are perishing and mm -hmm. have something to tell them of the hope. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Any, any other follow-up on that? Well, um, okay, so I'll just move on to the next thing here that... Um, I'm trying to, to decide between two here. Um, let's go to Psalm 130. It's another psalm that I've been living in. I was super excited when the uh, the new year started because I had finished the Psalms a few months ago and I wanted to wait for the first of the year so I could start over. <coughs> no real reason for that. Just <laughs> It's kind of like one of those things where you hold out for dessert. You know, it's like, ah, I get to start the Psalms again. Uh, mm hmm. Psalm 130, out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul does wait, and in his word do I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman for the morning. Indeed, more than the watchman for the morning. O oh Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is loving kindness, and with him is abundant redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. And, uh, you know, when, when we are going through those trials um, in our life, which are inevitable, and uh, one of the things that, that help us in that is to actually recognize them for what they are. Um, I think there's, there are... Um, there's a tendency sometimes to, I, and I'm trying to think of the right way to say this, but uh, there's a tendency sometimes to give credit to the devil when he's not the one that's involved. And 
I know there's a lot of people, I think, that live in abject terror of him at all times as though he's somehow co-equal with God and that there's this cosmic tug of war happening um, when, in fact, you know, when we read through the scripture, um, the devil can only go as far as God allows him to go, right? He only, he sets boundaries and he can only do things within those boundaries. And so when these trials and things come on us, we can trust that God has, he has set those boundaries because uh, the things that are happening to us, he says, are for our good. And so um, not to not to be just naive, I guess, or or walk blindly through life, just thinking that he's because the, the, the Bible does say that he's like a roaring lion that's prowling around looking for someone to devour. Um, but there's only one of him. He's not he's not everywhere the way that that God can be everywhere. And so um, to be able to put your faith and and trust in in the Lord and knowing that whatever it is that we're going through, he's in complete control of it. And um, but even in that, to be able to cry out to him and because he he's like a he's like a father. That's why we call him father. And he does care for us and love us like a father. So he wants to to hear these things from us and he he does care and he does um he does intervene and and work on our behalf so just another another um another one of my my little go to spots here um, I do have a couple more if uh and if anybody wants to jump in go ahead uh let's see, and this is a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, you're fine. Go ahead. Yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. Right. But he's a he's a created being, right? He's a singular being. So he is a spirit, but he's... A, Say that one more time, I'm sorry. People are everywhere in this world. Right. So he's not in just one place, right? Well, he's in one place, yeah. He's in one place. The evil that we, that we, I think that we may attribute to him, and, th- and this is something that it might just be me that has come up with this. Yeah. A lot of that evil that we attribute to him is coming from ourself, okay. Right. Because what does the Bible say about us? It says that our heart is deceitfully wi- wicked, right? And full of all kinds of evil. Um, even, you know, we can even try and deceive ourselves as believers. And, and, um, yeah, free will and that's where evil comes from as well. Well, it's our fallen nature, right. right? Ever since Adam and Eve fell, that's been the world we live in. Um, God cursed the world and all of creation when they sinned. And so that's the results that we see. And so um, I think uh, it's it's kind of a, you know, there's that old saying, the devil made me do it. Well, he probably didn't. You know, you probably just wanted to. I'm not pointing that at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's that's the way I look at it. You know, the, especially, and I think I mentioned this last time I was in here, we should never be surprised by... Um, the world and the things that happen because when people are are unregenerate or they're they're still blinded by the devil they're still slaves of sin they're going to act in their nature right they 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 don't have a new heart that has been given to them by god they don't have um the holy spirit within them guiding them and um and so th- it's they're just doing what they do yeah No, it's okay. Sure. Okay. They probably have the same thoughts, so it's fine. I'm. I know where you're going. The Left Behind series, or yeah. Yeah. Sure. 
Oh, absolutely. How they, they had different territories and there was the, the bigger ones and the littler ones and Sure. Oh, I read it when I, it came out when I was a maybe. You're you're pretty close. Now I am older than I look. Just putting that out there. Yeah, I think I was like forty. Okay. For those that don't for those that don't um yeah, I should just put it out there as like a quiz just to see what I get, but there's some people that know, so I'll be 40 this year, so. Oh, now I've, oh, okay, I, I gave it away. Yeah, thank you. Right, so, so it horrified me when I was a kid because I didn't understand it. Mm-hmm. He has, a, you know, an army of demons. Yeah. What do you think about that? Is what what verses in the Bible would would uh, support that or dispute that? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, yeah, they're all so the fallen angels. You, I think in it's going to be in Isaiah or Jeremiah. I think where it. You know, he's talking about seeing Satan fall from heaven. So there was a rebellion in heaven and basically God kicked them out, right? So um, Satan wanted to be Lucifer, which is his, you know, his real name, I guess. He wanted to be like God right. and he thought he could be. Right. And he, he probably still thinks he can. He probably, maybe he's that crazy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he has to be or else he would have given up and repented a long time ago. Right? You would think. Anyway, um, so he led the rebellion, thought that he was going to rival God, and God gave him the boot. And he threw him down here to cause all kinds of trouble. And um, underneath of him, he does have some kind of a structured group of other beings that he he commands. And they do what he wants them to do. Um, you know, there are some places there, um, I think it's in, I was just talking about it with somebody last night. I don't have a photographic memory like Josh does, so I, I don't just magically turn to the spot. I, I um, parts of passages I remember. To right, them. yeah, and, and so we were talking about it last night, you know, there's, there is a certain power, s- there's, there's a power struggle, not between God and, and Satan. It's below. It, there's a level below there because there's there's a verse about how Michael the arch arch archangel um, disputed with Satan over the body of Moses, which that that adds a whole bunch of questions just in itself. But um, and the and Michael refused to basically cast judgment on Satan, and instead said, "The Lord rebuke you." which is after the pattern of Jesus because he was quoting scripture to him. And so, um, but there, there was an actual struggle going on. Now, do we see that? No. We can see examples of it in, through the gospels. You know, Jesus casting demons out of people, be, people being um, possessed. Um, do I believe that there's demon possessed men in the jail? Absolutely, for sure. Behind series, mm-hmm. the impression was there are demons or fallen angels manipulating world governments and yes. and different things like that. Um, I think there 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 may be some actual biblical truth to that because it seems like they there are some some territory and that kind of thing where they um, where they can control it. Um, it's not something that I would lose sleep over. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not Sure. You said Satan is one being, and I thought, yeah, yeah he's just one. Being. He's just one, but. But then that that left behind gave me this vision of these demons seemingly right. ma- manipulating aspects of events in the world. Mm-hmm. And I think that there's truth to that. It, um, I think we see the results of that kind of thing because uh, there's a there is a there's an agenda, right? Like. God has his perfect will and he's carrying it out but there isn't a there seems to, there there is an agenda that we can kind of watch where things are coordinated against that um and then we do see examples of 
men or women that are demon possessed. You know, I, I, there's one in the, in my jail right now that I'm pretty sure, you know, it's, uh, um, it's not like we have screaming fights through the bars or anything like that, but you know, he sits with a blanket over his head and rocks about 20 hours a day, you know, and, um, I went in this morning and tried to talk to him and nothing. And so, um, you know, when we see that, that it, I don't, sometimes I think we can go too far. And I think Josh did a series last year on mental illness versus demon possession, right? So there's, we can get in the ditch by going too far. And, and if we go beyond what it says, then we end up with the Left Behind series. Right. I may have just said that out loud. Right. That's a lot, right? Right. Yes. Kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So John eight forty four says, "You are of your father the devil. You want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Where whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies." So again, like you had said earlier about in your nature. Mm-hmm. So obviously, the left behind is a mess, right? It's just a creative yeah. theological mess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <coughs> but it does cast a lot of doubt, which is how those things are very dangerous and they're yeah, very, it's very confusing. I remember thinking as I, I finished a book and then didn't read the next book. <laughs> I, right. <laughs> read the <laughs> scripture instead. Anyway. Right. 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 Okay. Hopefully they kind of fade it off. Yeah, I st- we still get them donated to the jail. Oh, of course. I think yeah. that's the point. Yeah. It's confusion and that he's the father of confusion. Mm-hmm. Right, but I think in answering that, like demon possession and all of that, it's easy to understand it a little bit in when you're, so the two natures being, you know, a a renewed nature, meaning that you have the ability to follow after God and obey his will, Mm -hmm. or you're of your father, the devil, which is your fallen nature, which is where you come in after Adam. Right. So from birth, you have this nature that has the ability to obey the devil and um, your lusts and your desires are that of his. Right. No, but those are, they come out of you, right? Mm-hmm. There's, like you said, your heart, like that's your desire to do those things. Mm-hmm. But and, and as uh, Christians, we, we, have, we actually have the ability to do the right thing, right? We aren't just slaves to unrighteousness. I, I, I feel like this is true. I wake up and I have the desire to do the right thing. Sure. Absolutely. It doesn't always work out. And I was just going to turn there, but you beat me to it. So. Yeah, Romans 7, where he says, the things that I want to do, I do not do. Yeah. And, yeah, and the, one of the, the interesting historical contexts that I learned about that passage um, was in, at the end of that, he says, oh, wretched man that I am, right? He's, he's just lamenting how he can't, he just can't do what, he, what the Spirit is leading him to do. And he says, if I could just put down this body of death... And in that context there, you know, I think, uh, and I might get the, the, the exact place wrong, but in that, whatever culture it was that he was writing, I think in Rome, for a citizen, there wasn't a, a death penalty. But if you killed somebody, they would tie the dead body to you and you had to carry it with you until it rotted off. Oh, wow. And so he was speaking to them in something they would understand, right? Uh, oh, if I could just put down this body of sin... So he's likening it to um, being somebody who's being forced to carry around a dead body on their back. Um, and he just wants to put it down. 
And so, and, and that's the way we should feel about our sin, right? And, and that struggle that we sense every single day um, as we are, like Isaiah 65 says, as we're provoking God to his face. And sometimes sin's not that big of a deal to us. Sometimes, I mean, we just brush it off like that. We justify it. Right, exactly. We, just, we, we find ways to justify it to make ourselves feel better or just to brush it under the rug. Mm-hmm. And, um, but what we have to consider and remember is that when he says that we're doing it to his face, we, we're literally doing it as though we're standing in front of him because we are. And, um, and th- that's a, another perspective that I had gained through something this year. And um, when, I, when I started taking that approach of, oh, I'm, I'm literally in front of God and am I going to do this right in front of him? Like poking him with a stick, you know, basically like provoking him to his face. I, I, you know, I think about like my, my younger son tormenting my, his older sister, you know, and he keeps poking at her and poking at her and poking at her and chasing her around, poking at her until she crushes him, right, <laughs> inevitably. <laughs> but that's that's kind of the same thing that we do we we d- we haven't put down that body of death and so we we're just provoking god to his face and um so thank thank jesus for what he did for us right um so that's kind of where Chris wants to hold still for us mm-hmm. you, you sin you brush it off and that does nothing <laughs> he's coming back to you right Mm-hmm. I think that's what Josh keeps saying. Are you okay? Right. Yeah. Well, it's it's an important question, right? It, um, I, there's there's nobody that's going to get into heaven based on, um, just a, a first of all a, a like a agreement with what the Bible says, right? Oh yeah, that I read that. That sounds great, right? That that doesn't work. Um, and Jesus says, if you love me, you will do what I say. And so, um, and, and obviously we can't get there on our own. Um, we, we can only get there by the, the righteousness of Christ. Um, but, uh, it's still that, that struggle. We will continue to deal with it till the day we, we go into glory. Right. So, um, What's that? You only want to do part of what he says, all of his stuff. Right. Exactly. And that was, you know, that is interesting that I like to go to the words of Jesus right, because he doesn't ever pull any punches and he just, you know, he just gives you the truth mm-hmm. and it's usually like painful. Like sure. Yeah. Right. For sure. Um, well, it's eight o'clock. I don't know. What time do we, are we supposed to be done? Yeah. Eight o'clock. Okay. <laughs> That was a quick answer back there. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess if we're if nobody has anything else that you want to to add real quick, otherwise um, we'll pray and then we'll be done. Probably the ki- the kids are probably done with Awana, so got to go pick them up. All right. Well, let's pray. Uh, Father, I thank you for this evening. Uh, thank you that we can gather together and uh, freely discuss your word. Um, I pray that we would uh, always be willing to. Um, speak into each other's lives and and come alongside to um, to support each other and and ask each other how we how we truly are doing and and find ways that we can can love and and um, exhort each other as we we all um, go down this road um, trying to follow you the best we can um, give us the strength uh, through your spirit to uh, go out into the world um, and into our our circles of influence and and uh, live lives that are um, noticeably different from uh, the world around us and um, help us to represent Christ the way we should and to um, glorify him in in the things that we say and do um, please be with us as we uh, head home tonight uh, keep us safe and uh, bring us all back here again uh, on Sunday in Jesus name amen all right well thank you Appreciate you guys uh, persevering.